Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows, where we talk about the highs and lows on and off the field. Joined today by Panthers Center duo, Isaac and Taylor. What's up, boys? Yo, hey, bro. What's up, How bro? you going? Appreciate it. Bro, first of all, how'd you get the name Tiny? You walk through this office, bro, you, you ain't Tiny. Um, nah, I think I just got it from growing up, eh? I was always the smallest kid and yeah, I didn't I didn't grow until like, bro, I think year 12 or even out of year 12. And then, yeah, so that name just always stuck with me. My dad yeah. gave it, so yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, I do, eh? Like, I remember people didn't even know my real name. Like, it was just always Tiny, I used to tell them. And um, yeah, I don't know, it's stuck with me now. And I like it, it's like a little theme, but now I'm going as Batman. <laughs> so the vibe is in yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the nickname you know i got my mouth guard as batman and yeah wrote on my shoes batman so just why batman i don't know i just like his story eh? like like he's like i don't know bruce wayne and then at night you know like people see him as a villain sort of but really he's like helping people while people don't know so yeah i just put myself in his shoes and pretend it's me so yeah it's a little bit of an alter ego, bro. I love that. That's yeah, I cool. think so. <laughs> <laughs> bro, uh, crazy game. We were just obviously, uh, boys went down to Melbourne. Oh, you, you on that left edge, uh, rolling into that center position. There was kind of talk about who's going to get that center position. Yeah. Uh, was that frustrating? And well, is it good to be playing the way you're playing already? Yeah, no, nah, I think, um, yeah, the talk, obviously, you know, it was, I did hear it a bit and it was sort of getting to me. I think just not even about Paulie, or just about like, oh, is Taylor going to be able to replace Crichton? Like, which freak in he's he's the best center like um i'm not trying to be him anyways and i'm not trying to do what he's done you know myself but yeah no nah, there was a little bit of frustration but now like i don't know i'm sort of just kicking back and just trying to play my best footy what i can do so yeah yeah done way to bounce back all right thank you Isaac, what's up bro uh, not much uh bro your name's in the paper a little bit now got some contract <laughs> talks coming up um obviously pretty exciting time for you and um, I've been talking to you boys a little bit off air and you guys are very unassuming and it's, it's cool for me to see. But what's it like to be in that contract negotiation phase now? No, yeah, it's pretty good. Like it's been in the talks for a while, but um, I didn't really want to watch it, anything before UK. Mm. I'm just happy to be like staying at Panthers. Like, I me mean, thinking like that's just home for me, sort of all I've ever known. And yeah, yeah just happy to be staying. Uh, so both you boys just keen to stay out there for a little bit longer? Yeah, I'm pretty keen. Fuck, must be good, must be. Like the time when I was at Penrith, like we were, I was telling you guys in that speech, like we were kind of the shit kickers and occasional, yeah. <laughs> the occasional winners at the time. But um, bro, it must be cool to be like the team right now, right? Eh? Yeah, no, nah, it's special, bro. Like um, I think just for the boys coming through too, like I remember we all coming through, they sort of just come off that Melbourne loss and like the amount of shit that we learned like in the next two years was crazy. Mm. And just like culture and that, like, watching the boys do their thing, like, I don't think like anywhere else we would have developed like as fast or. Yeah, because I feel like both you guys just both come in and, and just hit the ground running. Is that like development system or culture already set? Like, how does that happen so quickly, bro? Because you guys make it look easy. And the thing about you guys, see, when you score, like you always walk back and just got that like cool swagger about you. And I've always thought you guys are cool. <gasps> and you, the Instagram, when you post the anime, like Goku and stuff next to it, I think that stuff fucking cool. But like, how do you guys roll into a system and hit the ground running so quickly? No, nah, well, yeah, for me, I probably, it was probably the culture, like the standards are just, like if you went at the top, then you better get there, you know what I mean? Mm. But like, with that being said, the boys, like they were all keen as to help. Like they weren't, there was no like real ego thing behind people thinking like, I don't want to help him, like he's in my position, shit like that. Like everyone was just sort of at a point where like they would give fully to you and then, you know, we'd give back to the team, opposing them and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah, I think, I think you pretty much summed it up, eh? I'm similar to him. Um, yeah, I think just the culture, like it's a massive, massive help to be honest. And I think just the way our system was ran, I think we just really brought into it. And yeah, just the help that we got, it just made things easier. And then, yeah, I think just conf our confidence plays a massive role. So. Do you reckon it helps growing up in the, like in the area? Like you guys understand it. Like when I was at Penrith, we were just kind of from everywhere, mm. just pieced together. Do you reckon that plays a massive part to it? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I grew up with the boys. Obviously, my older brother was in NRL and I grew up with Romy and that. I think just that connection that we have and like with Biza and all that, you can just go to them so easily, you know what I mean? And not think like they're going to judge me like or they're going to um, not want to help me. So, yeah, I think just like growing up with them and watching them, I don't know, it's 
yeah, it helps. So, yeah. Bro, I always think you guys are going to go over and smack the like UK sides. And like, I look at their teams and I look at you guys. And I, you guys are on the field. It must get frustrating. Can you like put it, put your finger on like what goes wrong in, in those games? Uh, I'm not too sure. I, like, I sort of think the same thing. I feel like the the potential like in our comp and our team like just on paper we should be able to do get the job done mm. but like i don't know i've got to give it to them bro they're like tough like they always just show up they're not really like flashy in that but just hard workers yeah a bit of a dodgy call cool <laughs> <to it. laughs> <laughs> no comment, no comment. um obviously just come off the melbourne game and you guys had a chance to sort of break that sort of hoodoo and that record um, bro, to be fair, like like you guys said, bro, they played well. They mm. defended their ass off. Um, what was it like going into that game, and what was Ivan sort of saying after that? Uh, yeah, freak for me. Um, I know that game was hard as though. Like, um, for me, it was faster than the Wigan game was. I was blown, but um, yeah, I don't know, bro. They just scrambled gunners, and you know they were just hungry and. Yeah, that voodoo curse. I swear it's something. <laughs> <laughs> there's something there. Yeah, I swear there's something there. I don't know what it is, bro. What, yeah. what about you? Nah, yeah. I was pretty gassed too. I think just the England game gave us a bit of false confidence, like with the rough being so slow and that. Yeah. They were up for it. But um, nah, yeah. They're notorious fast starters, bro. And we just missed the jump. Yeah, I will sort of talk about off air, um, the pinner of shape and the system that you guys play in. Uh, it's beautiful to watch and it's like just repetitive. It's just knocks down the door, knocks down the door, post to post. Nate picks his passes and stuff like that. Um, is there much adjustment to that because everyone's been seeing it for the last three, four years now? Do you feel like teams are starting to read it a little bit better? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like if you look at other teams, I feel like people's trying to, Oh, not trying to, but like starting to adopt like similar. Bro, they coughing a fucking of straight off the bat. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> nah, I feel like we sort of know what works for us, and we just back ourselves to be the best at that. You know what I mean? Mm. Did you feel like it was getting away? Like obviously, you guys were chasing points a little bit. Do you feel like um, it was getting away from that structure on the weekend? Oh, I reckon a little bit, but like um, I don't know. I feel like something about us is like we're always in a position to get the win back. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, grand finals last year, obviously, uh, three P crazy, crazy scenes. What was it like being, being in that? Obviously, the best thing to fucking watch, especially if you came from Penrith Boys too. Yeah, hard. What was that like, bro? Nah, yeah, that was good. Like, yeah, it was gone, but just like the three P, I don't know, it's crazy. It's just like that legacy that like has been created, and just for the past players too, like that have been a part of it. I feel like it's just special to like keep going. Mm, fucking Nave special, isn't he? Wow. one of a kind yeah the best bro what, what makes him so great uh, I think just Triggy's determination his discipline like a lot of things eh, I could say about that guy like but he's just like he's actually always last off the field you know what I mean like he studies the game overboards he's always last in video like I don't know there's no like I don't know and he's just a hard worker like he really practiced all the fundamentals and yeah, he's just, he's the man, eh? And he's the best. So. Yeah, <clears throat> I think the coolest thing about him is like, and fuck, you guys are pretty humble too, but like the, the amount of success you guys have had, I feel like everyone's still the same dude, which to me is like pretty cool. Like it'd be easy to start carrying on. And I, like, what, what makes you guys that? Is that just because he's a leader? Is that because Ivan's your coach? He's always like nice and steady. <clears throat> How do you guys stay level when you've been at the level of, su level of su success that you guys are at? Yeah, no, I think <clears throat> it definitely helps when your leaders are like that. Like, mm. uh, yeah, leaders are coming in, they've done way more than us and they're way more humble than us. Like, <laughs> So we come in and be arrogant and it sort of just doesn't work, you know? Yeah. But then at the same time, just like a culture thing, like, um, yeah, you got like got to clean up of yourself in the gym, boys picking up like bottles and stuff. Like, Oh, you guys all right into that stuff too, I guess? Yeah, yeah. just starts sure. from like the bottom, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, it uh, keeps you hum humble. Um, I'm just surprised, like, uh, one thing I was talking about, Kevy, when I was in your guys, like, how, like, self-sufficient you guys are. So, like, I walk through and everyone's doing all their own ice baths and shit. Like, back when we were playing, it's like, you had to have the trainers standing there, like, mm. urine, urine, because all the boys are dipping out. Walk past, bro, like, all the boys are in video, uh, doing all the stuff, bro. It was cool to see, like, just the growth of it. I was just yeah. surprised how professional you guys are right now. Um, bro, you're, are you guys both carnivore at the moment? Oh, um, animal. Animal yeah, based? Animal base, yeah. how'd, you get in, how'd you get into that? Oh, well, uh, there's this guy named Paul Saladino on um, YouTube. Yeah. Oh, you do know? Yeah. 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 And um, now nah, my brother done it before, Terrell, when yeah. he was like a bit fat, like 
See? Oh, I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're big. brother, bro. You can say what you want. Yeah, yeah, big. And then he sort of went on that diet. Like, and then, yeah, I don't know. I'd done my own research. And then I saw my other brother, Tyrone. He started it. And then, yeah, I sort of jumped on it. And then, yeah, it just works for me. Eh? Like, I know my own body. And I feel like I've tried a lot of diets too, especially through my injury. And this one's worked the best for me. So, yeah. Well, what makes it so good? I think just not eating processed foods. Um, You know what I mean? It's coming from like the farm um yeah this guy can talk more about it you know oh well this guy put me on it like he introduced me to the guy and then i looked into it a lot and i was sort of the same thing like once i started doing it properly i just felt like way different i could have i was like measurable improvements you know which was massive for me like because i tried vegan before too and like <laughs> i felt all right but yeah anyways yeah and then i just i looked into it more and it was just like the benefits that uh the benefits in that are crazy like i don't think People like in the health industry now, a lot of people like, if they looked at that properly, they would think they'd probably go down the same avenue. Yeah, that Paul Saladino is pretty good to watch too, uh, isn't he? Yeah, I feel he like that's going to be the new wavelength. Like, yeah. um, I see what Adoka Car is doing it. Um, yeah. bro, like, like I said, my mate Quaid, he's been doing it for like maybe three, four years. Like he just oh, he just eats, and bro, he's same age as me. Yeah, and he's just yeah bro, I've seen oh, I've seen that guy's body. Eh? Yeah, and that's all he eats, bro. And he's just oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, not to be soft, but yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looks like he's in good shape, eh? good health. Um, so how long have you guys been in that for? Uh, I started um, probably just after the Samoa camp broke off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's when I started. Because I was with this guy's brother in camp and like he was sort of on it. <laughs> yeah. And won it and then just did it properly. Uh, what, what does your day look like food-wise? So like uh, I love seeing the breakdown of these types mm. of things. Yeah. Um, well, you, no, you explain first. Nah, normally only like twice a day. So. Sometimes three times uh, if we've got a big training day. But yeah, just heaps of meat, uh, heaps of fruit, raw dairy. Yeah. Are you getting uh, clear patches of bath milk? Yeah. Just for what? Bathing. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I get, but yeah, nah, they look after me. Yeah, I get I get that as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, bro, honestly, like probably about t nine, ten years ago, um, Craig Fitzgib and he was over at Hull and he was right into like paleo at the time and intermittent fasting. Mm. And uh, he used to only drink out of... Uh, canisters because he thought like plastic comes through into yeah. the water and stuff and like at the time this is probably like 13 years ago and like they they started getting on like intermittent fasting i used to do that while i was playing and uh, we just done paleo so obviously just sweet potato um sometimes like a little bit of rice but Ooh. i was just eating once a day and the same thing like i felt really good on the field but like i trimmed right up but i got too light because i was yeah. playing half and like I couldn't tackle anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> bro, I was getting pushed back and getting pushed back, and but but I felt mad on, yeah. on it, bro. I felt good. What does your day look like food wise? Yeah, no, nah, pretty similar. Eh? Like me and this guy send photos and looks legit pretty similar. On the he I just saw makes yours, it look, he just makes it look better because eh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my like wife cooks all my food. But yeah, it's pretty like pretty much like a loomy, um, raw honey with milk, raw mm. milk, and um, yeah, just steak and eggs, <clears> and sometimes. I'll have, yeah, like sometimes I'll have sweet potato, like rarely, but like, and rice, white rice sometimes, but yeah. not not really, and just fruits. Do you follow that guy that's always got the superhuman diet and he's got the food on the plate? Yeah, yeah. I've seen that You know guy. that dude? Yeah, I follow him too. Like his, his stuff's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, but that, I, I think when it's backed by science, it's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, do you get into Rogan and all that sort of, have you looked into the benefits from like Jordan B. Peterson? Yeah. He talks, have you seen that I watch interview? Heaps, yeah, I watch heaps about him and his family, like how it helped him. And his family with depression and that, eh? Have yeah. you saw that? Like, yeah, depression. Oh, yeah. That's pretty crazy. crazy. Eh? Scary. Yeah, it's I watched that. Was there, um, obviously, when you go into something like that, was there, like, backlash from, like, club nutritionists and uh, Ivan going, like, you know what Ivan's like, eh? He's doing it. Nah, they're sort of, like, I feel like it's pretty good. They, they give us the freedom to, like, at least experiment with things. And, um, like I said, like, the measurable differences, like, me and this guy both came back probably fitter than we've ever been. Yeah, 100%. Like, our testing results were just way up in everything yeah so uh, i don't know you can't really can't really argue it. <laughs> yeah go back to ivy just go hey man check, yeah. <laughs> check the results uh what about um sleep's becoming like a pretty important thing um i've just i normally wear a weight watch started tracking yeah. that is that something you boys are into uh yeah i feel like it's important as but it's just hard in my house like still share the room with my brother oh dear yeah my nephew and that lives with us so always yeah. crying and shit but it, <laughs> it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> Um, bro, so probably I read this in the article one time um, and I was someone who was always big into reading. 
and you sort of said before that you don't really want to shove it into face into people's faces, but you enjoy it. How'd you get into it, reading? Because it's not quite common for uh, footballers. Yeah, I just remember when I was pretty young, like, um, obviously I wanted to play in our own, so I was like, well, I didn't really like footy, like I didn't really watch it. And I just, like for me, I just wanted to like study greatness. So started looking at like, what's the type of things that they do? And they obviously all read. So I just got into it like through that. What's your favorite book? Well, I've got a few, but like anytime anyone asks me, I'll probably say Four Agreements. I just feel like- Oh, it's, it's a good book, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's a staple, bro. And anyone can start there, like it's good. Yeah, what about you? you, you like like I said before, you guys look, you look gangster, you got glasses on. <laughs> glasses nah, on nah, on nah. the podcast, bro. But when I set out with you, you well thought out, bro. I mm. find it really interesting. Like you're into reading as well? Yeah, no, nah, I do like the reading and journaling, but I was a bit late, like at school, I didn't think anything like I was just, this guy sort of put me on it, eh? Um, in Sunny Coast, sort of needed a change. Like I was going through a few things and he just gave me a book and then, I don't know, I loved reading from there. Like he gave me a men's search for meaning. And then fire that book just stood out to me and then i got into other books from there and then yeah now i'm reading um psycho cybernetics <laughs> that's yeah. crazy what yeah. are you reading what are you reading at the moment uh just about to finish um i think it's the magic of thinking big yeah but i'm gonna jump on that book too i heard it's pretty good yeah sounds cool yeah no it is i saw it from this rich guy that's like a millionaire <laughs> yeah. he's like the books that you need to um read to become a millionaire yeah but oh. yeah no there's a lot of key takeaways eh, from that book already uh, who, who do you guys sort of look up to um, in that sort of business space or like, obviously you got that Paul Saladino, not many people would know who he is. Is there anyone else you look up to in like business or over in America or anything like that? You know. Nah, I don't know for me, like I don't really look up to anyone, but after you came in, to be honest, like and said your story, like fire just made me think like, it's what I want to be on and sort of, yeah, I think that's why I jumped on this podcast too, to, you know what I mean? Like saying, pick your brain and, that, and I think it was, gave me some inspiration to see how you came from footy and you know what I mean? You are making those moves and not everyone was with you like that would be against you, like making fun. And I don't know, I sort of just feel like that's sort of me, what I want to be on. So yeah, you sort of inspiration for me. Oh, thanks like, bro, I appreciate that. Nah, we clip that up bro? <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, just seeing your surprise straight away after you like- Oh, I appreciate speech, that bro. message bro. Yeah, 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 like, you, yeah that's what message. I mean. I'm yeah. like, oh shit. This is so, bro, you left me like speeches. I was like, oh, all these courses, but I, like I've done, I was like, bro, this is like the real shit. Like you're just speaking mm. from your heart and what you've experienced. So yeah, it's sort of, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, It's yeah. crazy you guys are sort of thinking about um, what you guys are thinking about now, like being so young and uh, like obviously everyone needs to be footy, footy, footy. And like I was kind of weird when I was in football mm. because I used to come in with cameras and take photos and like all that stuff's cool now, but like yeah. back then. As soon as Kalen started doing it, bro, it was, it was cool. Yeah. Um, you, you, did you do photos as well, didn't you? No, no, nah, nah. oh, I wanna start just getting something like, just cause well, when I was younger, I used to like um, record some of my training shit. Oh, sick. And I'd like journaled heaps. So it's like, it's mad for me to look back on now and just see what I was doing and how I was thinking then. Yeah. So I just want to do it now for later too. Have you read the book Green Lights from Matthew McConaughey? No, nah, I heard it's a mad read. Oh, listen, do do the audio version of it because he he actually reads it out. But he he's journaled every day of his life. Oh yeah. Um, and just reflects on different stuff, bro. It's cool. Are you journaling now still? Uh yeah, like on and off, not as much back then. Like I used to do it every day for ages. That's cool, bro. I've never done that. What, what do you learn from it? I feel like, um, at the time it's not like you don't really see it as something big, but now like when I look back on it, it's just like. It's just like pretty cool to see what I was like consuming and content wise and that and like how that influenced my thinking and oh, yeah. obviously like helped me get to where I am today. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Bro, you guys are so onto it, bro. Pretty cool. What's it like? Um, obviously your brothers, um, all three of you mm. have, have made grade. You guys are all so different too, but what's it like seeing your brother at Roosters? Cause uh, I'm a Roosters fan. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got Roosters. Oh, yo. He's killing it, eh? Yeah, nah, fire. it's just crazy to see where that guy's come from. Um, just to see him, he quit footy, you know what I mean? Like, didn't even want to play it, he was done with it. And then just to see him come back now and playing the way he is, it's just, I don't know, I'm nothing but happy for him. You know, he deserves it all. And even with Tyrone, like, I'm just happy for that guy. He's changed a lot, but obviously no one knows, like, sees what he is. But, um, yeah, just seeing how the way he is from, like, when I saw him at England. Yeah. Like, he's on a spiritual, he's been on a spiritual journey. And I oh, think- Oh, has he? Yeah, I think, like, him going to France was a big blessing for him, like, he truly found his circle and yeah, he's changed a lot. Like I can't even say how much he's changed. He's just, I think he needs to jump on one of these, eh? Like just to see yourself, like, cause it's crazy to change. Yeah. 
that's um happened to him but yeah i'm just happy for all my brothers it's always love with them and yeah not, nothing can break our bond so um always i've read a few articles that eventually all you guys want to play together is that the dream yeah obviously that's the dream and the goal but i don't know how how that's going to work out or how it's going to look but for you boys might be worth too much money soon <laughs> <laughs> you yeah and your nah, brother. that is the goal but yeah i just see what happens for now eh? because yeah, I'm just trying to play good footy to see how my contracts and that goes. So. Yeah, um, obviously proud Samoan boys. What's it like? Um, like at the point where Samoan is at right now, like, uh, and you look at the prop rotation around the league, you probably got like eight of the ten best props, and mm. they're playing for Australia, they're playing for New Zealand. Bro, what's it like being like a proud proud Samoans? Nah, it's pretty cool. Like, um, for me, I wasn't really like close as with my Samoans side growing up. Uh, just like. A lot of them didn't really live in New South Wales or anything. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really know much. And then, like, um, yeah, I just wasn't really tapped in, bro. And then when I started going to the camps and stuff, like, just made me have, like, a massive cultural appreciation. <clears throat> mm. And just to be with the boys and, like, learning heaps, like, sort of just found, like, who I was because obviously that's part of me, you know? Yeah. So, um, you just, like, um, what's it like to, when you go into those experiences and I've talked about people like this, um, sometimes they don't understand, like, their culture, but when they go in, there's the education and there's that sense of belonging. Like, yeah. you, we talk about culture within teams and Penrith got a culture which is, like, built on success and hard work and, and the area right now. When you move into, like, Samoan or um, Cook Island, it's, like, a different type of culture where there's a sense of belonging mm. and it feels like history behind it. Like, did you feel that rolling in? Yeah, 100%. I feel like, especially the first time when I came in, like, because I didn't really know anything, bro. I just, I was sort of like embarrassed, like, like I don't really fit in, you know what I mean? And then uh, I found that a few of the boys, like, were the same and it was just gun, bro. Like, everyone, all the cultural leaders there and, like, that were inviting us, like, I thought they'd look at us like these guys are fake sound ones or whatever, but they, like, really took us under their wing and, like, taught us, you know, showed us who we were, like, as a people. Who's the big dog in their jeans? Yeah, he's definitely the big dog, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. You can, um, I always say this too, like you can't really talk back to the big dogs too because like oh. he'll flog you if you're in Tongan, Tongan side, Adam's going to flog you. Yeah. So, <laughs> and like yeah. island culture is respectful too, mm. isn't it? You're taught yeah. to respect your elders and once you're the big dogs in there, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, bro, Stephen Crichton, obviously heading, heading off to um, Bulldogs. You guys play in that same position. Bro, what do you learn from him? Because... When I played Islanders, we just backed our talent. Mm. He looks like someone who's got talent slash work ethic. Like, what did you learn from him, bro? Yeah, freak or me, I just say he's really like professional. Eh? So he's sort of like Cleary, but in a center role. Like, mm. he like the way he does video, he study notes. So create like for me, like even just that, like I never even do notes and that. But seeing him do it, like I was like, whoa, maybe I <laughs> maybe I need to be doing this. Like just the way he stretches, like after game, like even before games, like he's always in the stretching room. Just the way he thinks and yeah, I think it just says a lot for how he performs. Eh, like he's just a real professional and disciplined at what he does, and I think that's what sort of makes him, you know, the player he is. What about you? You've been in a center role for a couple of years now. What do you what did you learn from him? Nah, yeah, similar to this guy, like. His preparation is just unmatched, bro. Like him and Klez, probably say they're definitely like two of the best I've ever seen. But like a massive thing for Crito, bro, he just leads by example. Like he was never someone to tell you do this and that. Like, but he just shows you. And yeah, like he said, like dispose it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy for him, like to be leading at Doggies. I think yeah. it's a good role for him. How do you can you go? Nah, good, bro. Like, I don't know. Just seeing all the stuff that he does at Panthers and like. Obviously, we've got Cleary, Yoey in that, but he was a massive leader for us too, especially the backs. Mm. So I think, like, I don't know, it's a good opportunity for him to go as a player, like, and man. Mm. Uh, Romy, obviously, big part of everything that you guys have done, and I'm sure you guys are close to, very close to him. Uh, I feel like he's always sort of given the nice sort of balance to Naif. Like, Naif is like the like your structure, nice and mm. calm all the time. He always adds that flair, and you guys got a nice balance of that of, like, country dudes, like, uh, Liam Martin and the guys from out west who are yeah. fucking cool as fuck. Yeah, and that balance of energy has always been good. But what's um, R Romy leaving going to be like for the club? Yeah, Frick, um, I think it'll be big. You know, he's real. He's a real ball of energy. Like, especially at our club, he brings the energy. Um, especially in opposes. His opposes are unmatched. <laughs> <laughs> the pros, oh, is he yeah. loud as he? Yeah, he's the best shit. Wolf, <laughs> he's every a, pose. Yeah, he's the best shit talker. Like, you could think like, oh, he's a friend. And then on that field, like, 
wow, he's actually no friends with that guy. Like, you think you're good <laughs> with him in the locker room and then you're opposing him and he's like dragging your shirt or he's yeah. calling you, he's like saying you're shit. <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy, eh? Hey? Nah, mm. just, yeah, the way he is, eh? Hey, I just, yeah, I like his personality, uh, personality, you know, he's himself. Obviously, he gets a lot of hate, but it's it's what makes him him. And yeah, like he said, if you're not hated, you're not doing it right. So. <laughs> I love that. Um, do, do you like the, like, obviously those boys bring in a lot of attention and you, I see you guys sort of like the Bash Brothers where quiet, let your actions do the talking. Do you like when those boys talk up? Because it gives you a bit more motivation. Yeah, I reckon it's good. Like like I said, like the balance, it's just a mad like yin and yang, eh? Like it you is, got the boys bro. that are reserved and then the boys that are like a bit boisterous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it just goes together well. Like, I think it complements each other in the game. Mm. What about you? Yeah, no, I'm the same, eh? Like, I'm not really much of a talker, like, which is sort of bad, like, but, like, Tito, fuck, like, <laughs> bro, he doesn't he doesn't stop. So he's basically doing the call-outs for Santa, like, for me, like, <laughs> but, nah, it's good because I, I am, learning, obviously, I do talk on field, but I just, yeah, I'm not as loud as everyone else, but, yeah, I feel like, yeah, it's just, a, like what he said, a yin and yang and, just works out well, eh? Because mm. mm. there was a, sort of that time when you guys are sort of coming through and you guys, I feel like you guys are always niggly and getting into fights now. I, f I feel like you guys are at that point now where like, fuck, we're the best. Like, come for us if you want and then mm. we can always bounce back. Yeah. Who do you see as the big threats for you guys uh, this year? Obviously, Broncos. Yeah. The f fuck, you would have just ruined their whole off season. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roosters, my boys. Yeah, like, true. in terms of back lines, like we're up there as well. Who do you see as the big threats for you guys this year? No, nah, yeah, Reese's Broncos, obviously. I think like Storm, South Sydney. Like, I feel like the the comps are a bit more even this year. Like it'll be a lot harder. You reckon? Yeah, like Roosters and oh, uh, who was it? They lost that in Vegas. Broncos and South, like they're two of the best teams, and mm. mainly in Roosters one. So, um, center position, bro. It's probably one of the only positions in the sport where you can go one on one with, with someone. Mm. Um, two-part question who's someone that's given you trouble and who do you like going up against oh, that's, I, haven't, I haven't played two games or something, but yeah uh, for me yeah, giving me trouble like probably Stags I remember my first game against him it was like oh, I didn't play that many games bro, and he just put it on me and I was like fuck <laughs> but um, I don't know I like going up against like a solid center it's just I feel like I like to test who's the, who's the guy who's like who's the one you look forward to the most um, I don't know. Like anyone that I beef with, or not beef with. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Like, you know, it gets like a bit. It's like a one-on-one -on -one competition. Like, yeah, I like that type of game. Because mm. I like when sinners like go at each other. Because like like we said, it's only the one of the only positions where there's space where you can actually take someone on one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Um, what about you? What, what was your sort of welcome in the first grade moment? Obviously, you come in, killed it, scoring tries, carries a fucking hectic, making yards. Um, who, what was your sort of welcome to first grade moment? Um, was that like when I got hit or something? Smack yeah, me. just kind of like, oh shit, I'm actually. Yeah, yeah. Some, has anyone got you? Um, bro, I think. Oh, oh no, cop. Me, of course, cop. Someone got me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, <laughs> cop. <laughs> yeah, bro. Someone got me in cop, hey, man. I was like, oh, this is a step up, like yeah. Yeah, real deal. But for NRL, um, no, nah, I think maybe just oh, I don't know. Junior Paulo like sort of made solid contact with me once. It stuffed up my sternum for ages, eh? And then oh. I was like, oh. Yeah, this the this the real deal. This the real man. But I don't know. No, I don't know. I, I love the contact and that. I eh? just yeah. I feel like you. I feel like both you boys go like half looking for contact. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I think always from having brothers and playing in the backyard, bro. Trying to do the Carmichael hunt, run a straight challenge yeah. with them, bro. It just sort of prepared me. But yeah, I don't know. I think that was my welcome moment. Is yeah, Junior Paulo. You mean? Um, I'll become friends with uh, Dan Hessler, who's uh, your guys a mental. What's his official title? Do you mm. know? No, I asked him before, what does he do? He <laughs> says, I don't have a title. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, I was talking, he was in here actually, and I was talking, I was like, bro, like, what's your, like, what do you do? Yeah. He goes, oh, I was like, oh, I don't know. But <laughs> what's it like having a sort of, like, a mental coach? Let's just call him that. Mm. Yeah, no, nah, he's the man, bro. Like, I think, especially, like, last year, like, his development through the boys, like, you could see it heaps. Just everyone sort of just had the tools to do, like, what they needed to do to become a better player and that, like. What's some of the tools he gives you without giving too much away? Well, just like practices, bro. It's, it's sort of like anything. Like uh, He's big on like people practicing. Like we practice the physical stuff, how how much throughout the week. And like mental is probably the biggest side of the game. And no one really pays it any attention. Like he's sort of big on training that the same as you would physical. Mm. 
or was was he done for you coming back from injuries and stuff like that how's that game been yeah no nah, good i haven't really spoken to him much about like one-on-one -on -one yet but like just his role like when he speaks to all of us i think yeah it's really impacted us and yeah what tego was saying like he trains the mental side as much as the physical and i think that that's really a big asset in, the, in our game nowadays so it's all yeah it's crazy you guys have all that stuff now yeah eh? it's just yeah it's good to have him there eh? oh 100 percent uh ivan cleary obviously of bro I, like i jump on podcasts all the time and go fuck he's the man and a lot of the lessons he taught me um i didn't appreciate at the time but as you grow up as a as a man and develop and you know like oh like i understand why he's doing that mm. how important is it being for you guys yeah no i think he's heaps good eh? he's like a it's like just a calm as smooth smooth criminal like he's just so calm eh? like a <laughs> silver fox yeah he's the silver fox bro it's crazy how like I just, I just find it so crazy how calm he is and yeah he, so, he sort of helped um helped us come through you know like i feel like he's how he um spoke to us like the way he spoke to us it helped like for me like how i um take in feedback it, it was good for like what ivan was telling me and mm. more match my energy how he's just so calm you know what i mean like doesn't really scold you and just he says he like puts his belief in you and like it really makes you think like yeah well i'm ready for this and yeah i think that's just just helped me and yeah he's just i don't know he's just cool cat he bro he's just um, that's what i always say man it's like nothing feel like nothing ever phases him i heard dan say a cool thing about him um and he says when you walk into the panthers training you wouldn't realize who the head coach was because mm. he kind of like blends in to yeah, everyone yeah, and yeah. trusts everyone to do the job as a player but it also allocates a lot of roles to uh, your assistant coaches and let everyone do that yeah how important has it been for you no nah, he's been massive bro like um he's just a man like i think especially for both of us like he just gave us space to grow as players like in cup we're just doing so, like playing out of our ass basically like, you making guys are flying happen. yeah the boys are flying yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's not the same game like <laughs> but yeah he just gave us the space to become like the players we are now mm um so i was talking to you boys a little bit just before this and you guys are starting to move and business you're thinking business you're thinking uh financial what's what's the moves for you guys are you guys is it like you guys are a pair and you want to do things together like what's the vibe do you tell them about the vlog yeah anything. oh yeah <laughs> no nah, i think yeah just me and this guy we're just i think trying to find ways the most to you know build that general uh generational wealth and um for us if that's together and building our brand up then maybe that but maybe we're getting into vlogging like maybe we might start doing the vlogging and that yeah 100 yeah but we just i guess we just don't know where to start but um yeah we, i don't know i have a lot of ideas hey eh, that i've got in my head but maybe it's too many ideas <laughs> <laughs> like i need to really pinpoint one but yeah me and this guy are thinking to maybe come out of our uncomfortable zone and just yeah start doing doing a few things though yeah no yeah i don't know like we'll definitely do something just trying to figure out where to go from here like oh, bro, honestly if you guys started like vlogging and documenting your journey especially like with the preparation of like how you guys eat and stuff like I, like you guys are like like i said i kind of had a pre preconceived notion of who you guys were play for penrith like islander boys from the area and then i'm talking to you out there it's like shit these guys are way different than i thought bro if you could put that into content and even the preparation with the food and stuff bro that's where it's at yeah that's all we're talking about yeah. just like just playing around a few things and then like see where we go from there mm, fuck that's sick all right boys uh last question i always ask the boys what do you want your legacy to be there you go i don't even think real quick. Yeah, oh, <laughs> bro, i don't even know eh? um like in footy terms or just life just life i don't know for me i just more for me i just want to leave, uh, leave a legacy for my kids and i do like be a good example um just not to make the mistakes i made and i don't know i think just you know follow like follow what they want to follow don't be told like i don't know make their own decisions in life sort of thing like obviously yeah like sort of i don't know sort of like us like go against everyone's opinions like i don't know i sort of like that eh? and just yeah no i think just building generational wealth for them and that's more for my legacy like i don't the footy side and that doesn't doesn't phase me much it's more for my family the outside you know just trying to build a home for them and i don't know just try and grow them up to be good good people and mm. yeah that's it i heard a cool quote the other day that said success was when you grow old and you, your kids still want to hang out with you yeah bro. Oh, i heard that bro yeah, and i was that. like fuck they're like because i've always chased success and mm. business and money and stuff like that but i heard that and i'm not a parent but i was like that's a cool definition of success yeah 100 percent. what about you bro 
Nah, for, mine's probably pretty similar, like, just for my family and that. Like, I want to have a massive family, big kids and that. Horny fella. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yes. <laughs> nah, I'm going to leave my legacy behind, bro. Like, um, yeah, I just want to have, like, everyone to be good people, like my, my family, obviously. Mm. Like, what I want to be known as is just, like, a good person. I don't really care about, like, what I leave behind in footy. I used to focus on that heaps, like, until I started reading and I just learned that. It's better to be a good person. And oh, for sure. Fuck, you guys are so smart for your age. <laughs> uh, Panthers, can you get a four peat? Yeah, I reckon we can. Well, Anything's possible. Just yeah, hundred yeah, hundred percent. Got to make it happen. What's the theme this year? Or is that a secret? No, nah, it's more like a. That's more like we don't do it like mid year. Oh, yeah, okay. we haven't. Even, yeah, we haven't, haven't got one yet. yet. Yeah, nah, and then they just yeah build right into it coming into finals. That undisputed one was cool, eh? Yeah, far. I feel like the fiends have been gone as like even I get right into them, eh? Like, but I reckon it helps heaps, eh? Like, yeah, you just got like a reference point to come back to all the time. Yeah, for sure. Because like footy gets repetitive, eh? After a yeah, while, yeah, if yeah, I get sure. July, it starts raining. Looking outside, I'm like, oh, <laughs> mm. I don't be catching these balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys, bro, I just want to say thanks for jumping on, and I'm glad to meet you guys. So if I can help you out in any way, shape, or form, bro, reach out to me. Um, so thanks for jumping on. Nah, thanks, thanks for, for having us, bro. bro. Gunners, appreciate it. Hundred. Oh. Oh, 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 oh,